Hello, my name's Karina Thompson and welcome to another episode in the series Getting Started with Digitizing using the MySonet Embroidery software. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can use satin stitches within your digitizing. If you're a subscriber or own a copy of MySonet, or perhaps are just interested in finding out more about embroidery software, why not subscribe to our free YouTube channel and that way you won't miss out on any of our future episodes. In this film I'm on a PC with the platinum level of software installed but everything I show you today you'll be able to do on a Mac. The principles are exactly the same. You might find it useful to watch earlier films in this series so you understand how I've loaded a background image and then reduced its visibility. This image is uh, from a sample in the free downloadable samples from mysonet.com although what I have done is go into the draw and paint module within the software to break up these lines so they're not all continuous. It's just going to be much easier for me to demonstrate. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Quick Create tab. Now you'll know from earlier films that if I wanted to do a Quick Create Digitize, I could do. And indeed, if I want a satin line around an object, that's a really quick way of doing that. I can deselect my pattern fill, pick up the Quick Stitch and Auto Hole, click on an area and then click OK. But I don't want to do that today. So I'm going to uh, delete that out. And what I want to do is talk about this button here, the Quick Stitch Satin. So I'm going to click on that. I know that that's active because that's green. I'm then going to click on that shape again. Again, move my color tolerance box out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to click OK. And you can see straight away we've got uh, an area of satin that the software has put in for me and I'm going to repeat it with this area here so you can see on this first one it was actually quite straightforward but we've actually got a tight bend in here so let's see what happens I'm going to click OK and you can see we've got an area of satin in here and the software has managed to calculate and I'll just zoom in so you can see so the satin line is coming round here and it's calculated the best way to go around that bend. I'll just zoom back out and again I'm going to pick up that quick stitch satin and I'm going to click on this more complicated shape over here. And then I'm going to click OK. Now to start off with it looks like the software's done a good job on this but I'm just going to go to the view tab and I'm going to pick up the get length tool and again I'm going to go back to the quick create tab. Now if I actually measure the length of the stitches at this point can you see that they are 22.6 mil long that's way too long and my one key golden point if you take nothing else away from today when you're digitizing don't digitize satin areas or satin stitches that are over 9 mil long for two reasons. One is if you think about this, this is going to um, sit on the fabric and it's dead easy for it to catch on things. It'll get snagged um, or ripped. It won't look very nice. And also if you've got automatic cutters on your machine, the machine will think that these are actually float stitches and what will actually happen is it'll stop the stitch, tie off, stop the stitch, tie off, stop the stitch, tie off and it will take ages and in actual fact you won't have a satin area. So this isn't going to work. So again, like before, I'm going to delete this out and I want to introduce you to this second button, the quick stitch multiple satin areas. So just like before, I'm going to click on it. It's green. I know it's active. And then I'm going to click. I'm going to move my color tolerance out of the way. And then I'm going to click OK. And I'm just going to zoom in. 
so you can see this area a little more closely. Now, can you see what the software has actually done is it's actually put a break in here. OK, which is great because we won't have those big long floats in here. But looking at this, in actual fact, it would be much better if that seam had actually gone down here. So I'm going to show you in a moment the best way to do that. So again, just like before, I'm just going to zoom out. Again, just like before, I'm going to uh, delete. And I'm going to delete that other area. And I'll show you a better way to digitize that area in a moment. So what I now want to do is I want to come on to the Point Create tab. Now it's remembered that choice from before that's working with Satin Line. Now it might be that you actually find using the Point Create and the Create Area in Line tab a, a useful way of um, creating areas of satin. Let me show you. So I'm going to click and plot points in just like we've done in other films. And I can always move my nodes if I want to in here. And then I'm going to do a uh, right click. And you can see that that's digitized a line in there. But you can see that in some places the line isn't wide enough. What this is actually doing is it is putting a satin line down that is of uniform size. If I go to the film strip and do a right click, I can go to properties. And for instance, I could change that width if I want, but it will always be a uniform thickness of line. The other thing that you might find useful is I can in actual fact, and let me move um, my fill area and line box. I can actually change the nature of my start point. You can see here my start point is a straight line. If I wanted to, I could have a point if I click apply. Can you see that's actually put that on? And it's a little bit trickier here because we've got the pink cross indicating where my last stitch is. But if I wanted to, I could actually have this angled. The default is a 45 degree angle. But if I wanted to, I could actually bring that down to 30, which is the lowest that I can. It's a little bit tricky to see, but I'm just going to click on that and it's actually made it slightly more pointy. I'm going to click OK on this and what I want to do is go to the life view and you can actually see, I'll just again zoom in, so you can see we've got this point in here, we've got a nice even flow round there and then we've got a sharp point here. I'm just going to close this down because that might be good enough for what you want. Let's talk about other features up here. The satin area, again, if I needed to, I could make a satin area. Now this tends to work better on smaller shapes. So let's say, for example, I wanted to fill this area with satin. I could click on that and again just like we've used to in the past if I hold my shift key down I can plant a sharp node. Just going to follow this shape round. You can see that I've got my uh, nodes in here. Just drag that up and then if I'm happy with it I could uh, then do a right click and that has created an area of satin for me. The problem is if I go to my view and get my get length tool and measure that satin, I can see that this is uh, over 20 mil long. So that's two centimeters. That's way too long. I'm just going to take that out and go back to the point create tab. But the satin area is useful. Let's say that I was making little sort of small areas of satin stitch to kind of build a pattern 
in some way. That's a really nice way of doing that. But what I really want to do is introduce you to the satin column button up here. I'm not going to talk about the other column features. They're going to have their own separate film. So I've selected the satin column and let me zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. And the best way to think about the satin column tool is that it's almost like we're drawing a ladder and the joining line is the indication of the direction of stitch. Now I'm coming to um, uh, this where my satin is going to change direction so let me show you how I would go about this. I'm going to want a sharp node here so I'm holding down my shift key and again because they're curved I can then go back and what I'm doing I always think what I'm doing is I'm drawing a ladder and I'm working my way round you can see that and I find this the most useful way of actually digitizing lines of satin because it gives me lots and lots of control and I can uh, indicate that direction of stitch as I go just going to finish off here and I'm just going to run it slightly under this area over here just put another node in and then I'm going to click that and you can see that we've got this area of stitch running through here and that means what I can then do is I'm going to start over here because I've still got my satin column tool selected and start off just like before plot my nodes and the direction that I want my satin to go in I'm just gonna go over that um, sort of overlap so when that's stitched out it should look great and again if I was doing this properly I'd actually change this line as well and you can actually see we've got this lovely sense of overlap here if I come into the life view and let's just zoom in on that you can see that we've got this overlap happening in here looks very neatly done looks great but I don't know if you've noticed we've got a bit of a blunt end so let me show you if you need to how you can go back and edit so I'm going to go to my home tab I'm going to click up edit points and here are all my nodes again so all that I need to do is actually just pull these two points in and if I click on somewhere else I can see that and that's looking great to me now I've also clicked on this now can you remember this was a satin area rather than a satin column so let's talk about the difference here so can you see we've got our white nodes so if I needed to edit or change the nature of my uh, actual shape I can click and drag that but these hexagon tags here are a bit like the steps on the ladder that I was talking about and that if I needed to I can change the direction of my uh, satin line so for instance around here I might actually want to bring these up so that that satin line is sort of a little bit more in keeping with that flow along there so what I want to do is I'm going to go back to this shape and I'm going to go into my properties because there's a couple of other things I want to talk about now can you remember from earlier films that density the higher the number is that is the more open your um, uh, stitchery will be so for instance if I go to uh, let's go up to 12 and I click apply let's just move this out of the way can you see it's actually opened up my stitchery 
and I might want that I might not what I want to do is just talk a little bit about the underlay and you can see it because I've opened up my density if I click on the zigzag underlay and click apply you'll see what happens the software will lay down an area of zigzag and then it will lay down the satin on top of that and you would use that if you had big areas of satin stitch I'm going to uncheck that because what I tend to use is an edge walk and again I'm going to click apply and can you see what that's actually done is it's laid down an edge walk it's basically a line of stitches on the edge that the satin stitch will then sit upon and that um, helps with the structure of the satin if I want to I can play, I can introduce a gradient either a single color or a multicolor but again I'm not going to do that I'm going to uh, bring my density back to usually uh, it depends um, on what you're stitching on but usually somewhere I would say between two and five depending on the fabric that you're embroidering on um, so I'm going to click apply and then I'm going to click OK so my golden rules when I'm digitizing with satin is if possible I will try and go point create and do a satin column I just think it gives me more accuracy remember to use your uh, life view so that you can actually zoom in and have a look at the nature of the stitchery that you're doing and whether or not the direction of the stitch is going the way that you want it to does it need tweaking and editing and finally think about the density of your stitching is your satin stitch uh, open enough so it won't take forever to stitch out but dense enough so that you do have the coverage that you want. If you found this a useful film, please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can help you get started digitizing using MySona embroidery software.